they had trouble with Alexander. They said that he, he didn't step down on the gas all the way. So they put a little light on the thing, so when it went full throttle, it lit the light. And Rosikowski, who is Marseille now, does he call himself, but Bill Rosikowski, he says, when you pull up the starting line and stage, that light came on. <laughs> so I wasn't fooling around about the deal. But it, it, it ran pretty good. It was the first blown kind of, thing that I, I was never around. Heard anything like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so then we went on from there. And Zuchel, with Perdone there, I had suggested Zuchel to Perdone. I started that whole thing with the Perdone no, Zuchel. Is, this is the this is the, uh, this is the, the Fuller car. Yeah. Okay. Let's get on here just a little bit as to what we're going here, because Zuchel, I I wanted to change over to fuel. You know, when they said, okay, you can run fuel now, anything more than four bx got to be a little bit on the ridiculous side. So I didn't want to go through the Garlet's way of learning how to run fuel. If you look at him when he smiles, he smiles like he's got chapped lips. Because look close, he has no lips. He's burned them right off of himself, you know. So this whole pioneer thing didn't didn't strike me too well. And Zucho was running pretty good. So right to the chase. That's it. It's to go to the best. A couple of more photos in. Okay. We should be getting to the first photos of the barnstorm. Okay. So what happened with that? was there it is right there that's in my chassis shop right there I had a chassis shop for about three months actually it was Tom's hobby shop but we had to have a warrant to have the lathe and all the stuff there so I called up Zuchel and I says I'll tell you what I'm gonna build some chassis I'll give you uh, I'll give you a chassis if you put your motor in it so he says, well, I'll let you know. He was racing with Cannon, and they were fighting like a cat and a dog. So he says, I'll let you know Sunday night. So he calls up Sunday night, and he says, the Cannon thing is over. I'll take your chassis. I says, okay, you got someone to drive it? And he says, well, no. And I says, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't I own the car, and you own the engine, and we'll go in partnership together. That's what I had in mind in the first place. Mm -hmm. I was just reeling them in with the free car deal, you <laughs> understand? And we started that thing on Monday morning, and on Thursday night, we're on our way to Seattle, Washington. Because he had a $500 deal up there to run at the World's Fair race up there and I wanted to see the World's Fair so this is great why don't we go ahead and do it so we had that thing we took it down Wednesday night took a run at San Gabriel the headers fell off of it I'm amazed it didn't go through a tire and crashed it so we just made a little squirt and off to Seattle we went we went up there and ran an 808 which was unheard of at the time and won the race won the race, then luck into it, and beat Garlitz in the last round. Well, that, right out of the thing, switching to fuel and then beating Garlitz, that must have I'm been I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> One and Zuchel about. was floating around about that far oh, right off the there. ground. Now, when you say, from the time you two decided to build this car, right, and you started pounding the tube together, right, how long until you made the first pass? Three days. But... We cheated a bit. See these American front wheels on here. I had a twin engine car that was just about done. So we built the chassis and stole, well, actually we built the front end too, but we stole an awful lot of parts off of that twin engine car. So that gave us a big leg up. The rear end was done and everything. And that swoopy body that ended up on the barnstormer, we just had a little thing glued on here with PK screws. I know, I had a picture of that the next one. Yeah, but the regular, the big body, that was all done. I got for the for the twin engine car. Now, the, the big the big sissy bars was that what I call it? that's what I think okay. everybody is called. Yeah. Uh, was this was I think the first car I ever saw that had those. Well, I don't I don't know that I could really say that for sure, but uh, I do remember calling them silly. See this door right here? Mm -hmm. That went into the back of the building. That's where the Radican Jackson and Stern. Uh, no, the uh, Gady Safford. Safford, Gady, and Radican? Yeah. 
The Sour Sisters. The Sour Sisters. I named them the That's Sour Sisters. I had a big, I had a big billboard up in my or chalkboard actually, up in my wall, and we'd say we need a chassis for this, front ends for that. So we'd come home every Sunday night, and it was my chalkboard. So I'd keep score on how the Oldsmobile did and how the Chrysler did, and it was doing better. And it was my board. And I said, boy, you guys walk around like a bunch of little old ladies back here every time we beat you. What a bunch of sour sisters you are, and it stuck. You know, always, always wondered where that came. From. That's where it came from because they were like a bunch of little, little old ladies, See, that's like I say. I to get a lot of this and Bill get it put down because yeah. then we all remember what it is. Yeah. I think if you go to the next one, okay. this is another, this is Lion's Drag Strip. That's when we first came back to Lion's Drag Strip. She was a little humble. In fact, we stayed up there at the World's Fair. I've got all kinds of pictures at home if you ever want them. When we were up in the helicopter flighting around the Space Needle and everything. And then we came home and ran the car and it was the first car to run in the sevens. Now it, it was legitimately, once we did it, we'd do it everywhere. What happened was... Was that at San Gabriel? Uh, we ran it at San Gabriel. Now I ran good at Long Beach too. It was a mistake. Zuchel had put a 10-inch clutch in the thing because he wanted to cut down on reciprocating weight. He says, it's, it burns a little more off the clutch discs, but who cares? We have it out at the end of the week anyway. Well, what it was doing, it was smoking the tires and slipping the clutch at the same time and Keith caught on to it at the same time we did. We didn't know why it was happening, but it was happening. The car ran quicker than everybody. Keith had put a disc in backwards, and it was slipping running down through there, and the car took a quantum leap of a couple of tenths, you know. And he figured, he thought, well, what's happened here the way the discs were? So we both caught on to it at the same time, and we ran into the sevens two weeks before Perdon did. And black. <laughs> <laughs> or should I give it one of these? <laughs> uh, one of my favorite stories was San Gabriel. I was out there, I probably 15. Yeah. And you and Perdon went at it. That's it. Seven, 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 both lanes. Yeah. I think I almost hurt myself on the rock pile from falling off. First time anyone ever ran side by side in the sevens. And that started the match racing thing out here. I was match racing back east before that with my twin engine car. So I came out here and I got really used to them handing me $500 when they walked in the gate. Then I go back to Long Beach and 47 cars are running down there for a $50 bond. $37.50, thank you very much. You know. So I told, pa I told Pappy, I says, listen, you've got the two seven second cars here. Let's run them side by side and decide who's the king of the hill. But if we run each other, obviously we can't be in competition, so it'll cost 500 bucks a piece to do it. I don't have to pay any cars to come in here and threw it away. So I went to Tice at San Gabriel and gave him the same pitch. He hired us in there and we packed the place. And that was the start of match racing out here in California. Actually, it went another state. They said, thanks a lot. Uh, you know, that'll be great. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got your next step for you. They were running jet cars that had never run anybody. And I says, let me race, match race a jet car next and advertise it that we're going to, I'm going to get burned up if I get behind that thing, you know. And he said, oh, we'll do it next week. I said, no, 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 no. Give it time to advertise. I was a promoter. You know, I'd been in the biz with the movie thing and I knew what people liked. We did the thing and packed the place again. And it just, that started it all that running. It's one of my all time favorite photographs is the hot dog. <laughs> well, board. that's what I said. That is absolutely <laughs> got to be the best. Well, you know, I knew we eat tea better than him, so I knew it wasn't a foolish thing. But even still, before we ran that race, I set the car out in the dirt along the track and let him go by me to see what kind of an effect it would have. I was dumb, but not stupid, you yeah. know. And it, I couldn't feel it at all, so that gave me confidence. And everybody says you're going to get burned up. Of course, we advertised it. 
so I put marshmallows and wieners on uh, on the roll bar. I've got a picture of that, by oh, the no, way. There's a, there's a picture I have. <laughs> now, was David still doing the motors at that time? He was always doing the motors. And you'll see some pictures when he's working on the motor and I'm standing in the pits looking over him, you know. When we went up to Seattle, Dave, Dave used to call himself the kid all the time, you know. So we had a full day's drive to get up there. And I was talking to him, and I says, "Oh yeah, with these Buicks, you know, we we do the top rim gap, top ring gap at forty thousand." And he says, "Oh no, we tighten them up to thirty on the Chrysler." And I had the pump handle in him, bumping up and down and up and down. By the time we got to uh, to Seattle, I knew everything he ever thought he knew about Chryslers, <laughs> and I was ready to run. <laughs> that was one that was. Uh, there's another picture. I don't know what track. It is. It's a picture of the barnstormer. You're standing beside it, and you got your jacket off, and you're looking at the motor, and you've got that look like, okay, now what do we do? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Is, no, I, is, I love those pit sort of shots. Yeah, I know they really what, talk. I got that particular one on is, my trophy room it's at a, it's home. A, it's a great picture. Yeah, it's yeah, picture. yeah. Well, see, we were talking about going on tour. They wanted me to come back again the minute they saw me running the fuel car. I had done the Margie series, it was over with, and I didn't want him to ground me again, so I decided to go racing. Well, Dave was only 19 years old, you know, and he come home at night, threw his shirt on the floor, and boom, it was clean pressed and back into the closet again. And he didn't want to untie himself from mom's apron string, so I went off on myself. And that's what really broke up the... Um, the no, partnership. When you were doing that, was he still shipping you parts, or did that pretty much... No, 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 no. That pretty much ended it right there. This was the kid yeah. by then. I told you. By the time we got to Seattle, I knew everything he ever thought about. <laughs> you know. So, uh, is that about when the Donovans came off and the uh, Mickeys went on? Was that about yeah. when you... Yeah, okay. Yeah, we... Uh, I see that change in a lot of pictures right there. Yeah, yeah, well... We had the old rock arms, they used to break all the time. So he'd take his hand and run it across the header before we went. And he goes like that one time, and he looks at me, and I looked at him, my eyes were probably that big inside the goggles, and he goes, <laughs> them guys were brave standing on the starting line you know that don't you yeah, then the thing then the thing turned into a ball of fire in the lights in fact he had a, a big 400 almost 500 inch motor in that thing and I kept telling him Suchel we got too much power if I step all the way into it I can feel it slow down and on that particular run, indeed, it had broken a rocker arm, and we run the first 190 mile an hour run. He got down to the other end and checked it. He says, yeah, I knew it was broke. He says, well, don't tell anybody we did it on seven cylinder, and you say, won't believe it. But the next weekend, we had a 392 in it, because we used to go round and round, you know. We one time... He used to come over and we'd work on the car and he'd leave the mag out when he bought the engine over so that in case we had to do any arc welding on it, we wouldn't he bother him. Yeah. So one time he was late getting there, so I put the mag in. <laughs> he took it back out and put it back in again. And there's a little cartoon on my website of me doing that. And he says, oh, no, 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 no. I can take and put four mags and four engines in one car, but you don't trust me to do it with the Chrysler, you know. And then I chip at his heels as he was walking around <laughs> the shop and wouldn't let him let go, you know. So I'd wear on him a bit from time to time, and when I knew I was getting to him, I'd just stir the pot harder, <laughs> and he'd get more excited. Well, that, that's part of the whole thing.